This leaflet was put together in order to tell people the truth about the HIV test. People who test HIV positive are usually terrified by the thought that they're going to die. At first, they were told it was like being run over by a truck. Then, that they'd live nine or ten years. And now, that they can live a natural lifespan with HIV. But is the HIV test reliable? Or is the science behind it desperately flawed? What exactly is it testing for? Should anyone be subjected to a test that can deliver conflicting results because there's no gold standard to measure against? We've travelled to a small town in the south of France to reunite and listen to two modern-day thinkers who challenge the HIV test and what it stands for. Robert Crumb, internationally renowned cartoonist, came to live here 35 years ago. He's famous for the incorrigibly lascivious Fritz the Cat and many other satirical and irreverent works. Today, he continues to draw, to read, and to think. I kind of see you as a philosopher. I am. I'm a philosopher, yes. <laughs> Driving into town to meet Robert is another thinker, writer, and a member of Rethinking AIDS, Martin Barnes. He and his wife, Monique, also live in Provence, about an hour's drive away. We both lived around Davis, California, which is a big university based mainly on agricultural science and dominated by agribusiness, big agribusiness. And so we were both involved in a very idealistic newspaper, this thing called Winds of Change. <laughs> and I did cartoons for it. And so I had a collection of Robert's uh, drawings from our old newspaper days. And then I collaborated with David Crow and Christine Majori to write a pamphlet. It was my idea. Let's write a pamphlet. And so I used Robert's old drawings for the pamphlet without asking Robert. Then when I moved to France, I said, Robert, we're about to publish this pamphlet. And I showed it to him. He said, Guess what? I've been reading about AIDS, too. Yeah, go ahead. You can use my drawings. That's how the AIDS trap was created. Martin ended up nearby here in France. He ended up living nearby here, about an hour away. And he came to visit me one day. He said, yeah, let's get together. You know, I hadn't seen him for decades. And <clears throat> we started talking, and he said something. What do you think about the HIV thing? Because we were talking about all kinds of... Uh, scandalous political stuff. And I said, I, I think HIV is a phony deal myself. And he said, whoa, me too. And that's very rare to run into somebody that agrees with you about that. You know, it's a real lonely world for HIV dissidents. And, you know, you just con consider a nutcase. You say that to most people and they look at you like you're a crazy person, you know, like they, you start, you can see it in their face. They think you're unhinged. You can see it. <laughs> There's no such thing as a positive test really, because they don't know what the protein components of the virus are, really, because they've never isolated the virus. What they're doing is that they think that this set of proteins corresponds to this virus. The problem is this set of proteins also corresponds to if you just had a flu shot, if you have problems with your kidney, even if you are pregnant. There's so many things. There's 80 different things normally in the course of life that you could be sick for and then be positive on an HIV test. Our two thinkers were first influenced by the scientist who originally challenged HIV as the cause of AIDS, molecular biologist at Berkeley, California, Professor Peter Duesberg. HIV 
cannot be the cause of AIDS because it doesn't infect enough cells and it isn't active enough. It's only found in one out of 8,000 T cells, which are often not always lost in AIDS, and they can't be. That loss can't be due to HIV if only one in 8,000 cells are infected. A little later, the Perth group of scientists in Western Australia announced that HIV hadn't been properly isolated or identified. There is no way to test for HIV. This is because all the tests are based on indirect markers, none of which has been validated by proving that the markers are positive only when the virus is present. If there is such a thing as an AIDS-causing retrovirus, then its unique body part, that is its proteins, should only be found in HIV-positive individuals and individuals who have AIDS. But this is not the case. All the principal HIV proteins have been found in all manner of cells from healthy human beings who are HIV negative. Because of the often conflicting and contradictory results involving the HIV test and the drugs given after it, it soon became the turn of lawyers to question the accuracy and validity of the test on behalf of their clients. There's the case of Audrey Serrano in Massachusetts, USA, who was awarded $2.5 million in damages. She tested positive at one clinic. A second clinic never confirmed this. She was treated for nine years with antivirals and eventually tested negative. In 2016, Jen Mawson in Maryland, USA, tested HIV positive nine times when she was pregnant, and then she was given a negative result. She was told her antibodies had been raised because she was pregnant, and this had triggered a positive result. And then there's Terry Hedgepeth, married and living in the Maryland suburbs. His lawyer, Jonathan Daly, claimed $20 million in damages for his client who received a significant settlement. Hedgepeth was assumed to be positive, but wasn't. It destroyed his life. It, it turned him into a, a great independent worker, into a homeless person, um, using you know uh, drugs and the whole, the whole thing was just upside down. The tests themselves, the manufacturers put an insert into the test saying, do not rely upon this test to make a diagnosis of HIV. As we all know, the HIV tests do not test for the actual virus itself. It tests for antibodies in the blood produced by the immune system. So you get what's called a false positive. Well, when you get that false positive and you're told that you have it and no one's going to accept responsibility for the false positive, your life is turned upside down. No one's to blame for it. And you have to look at then who really benefits from this diagnosis. And it turns out, really, it's the pharmaceutical industry. So um, I don't know what the answer is, but a class action against the pharmaceuticals and or a class action against the manufacturers of the drug tests, uh, testing kits, would be, I think, a very good thing. But you'd better be loaded for bear because they're not, they're not going to take that lightly. So there's going to be some kind of reckoning. And I believe, I hope that happens sooner rather than later. But it's not going to happen, as I said, from inside the HIV AIDS community, the standard community, if you want to call them that. It's going to have to, have to happen from outside. The AIDS trap has been translated into six languages, and there are many people around the world who know there's something wrong with the infectious hypothesis for HIV AIDS, and that the test should be avoided at all costs. However, it's dangerous to speak out for fear of losing jobs and suffering a comeback from the pharmaceutical industry. So we're going to leave the last word with our thinkers who have nothing to lose. What do I think about the HIV test? I think it's a complete scam. But you know, the thing is about me is you have to remember that, that I am a well-known nutcase and anything I say People are going to view me in that context that I'm a, I'm a kind of a nut, known, well-known crazy person, you know. People are not going to take anything I say seriously, but I mean, I've read so much. I have a six-foot stack of books I've read on this subject, so it, to me it's a really open and shut case. They, they got nothing there. The, the orthodoxy has nothing. It's a bunch of bullshit. They haven't really established a gold standard as to what they're testing for. 
gold standard is a scientific term. It means for sure you know what it is you're testing for. But all they have is a set of antibodies that might or might not correspond to what they say is the HIV virus. If you go out of line, everybody jumps on you. If you're a doctor that goes out of line, that you lose your license. If you're a scientist, goes, scientist that says, wait a minute, this whole thing is a scam, they jump on you. And so it's a very rigid system. Somehow we need to break through. I don't know how, but we're trying. <laughs>